Hey everybody, this is Alex Merced from AlexMercedCoder.com and again this is a part of a series where I'm testing out different headless CMS's. The next one I'm trying out is Graph CMS. Now what Graph CMS does, it's a headless CMS, but what it gives you is a GraphQL API. So it's built around GraphQL. So I'm going to log in. I think I'm, I do have an account under my GitHub account, so let's see here. Not I will in a second. Well, let's see here. So the sign-up process is pretty straightforward. I just connected my GitHub account. Now let's create a new project, not from a template, but that's pretty cool that it has some starters. So if you want to start a podcast or a swag store or a blog, that's very nice. We're going to call this dogs because that's usually the practice project I make. Dogs. Dogs. Okay, i rather do that because that's going to be closest to me. Okay, because I'm located in New York City. So again, you're just choosing sort of what server you want to connect to. Okay, and... Here we go. So here are the pricing. So I might as well go over that now. So let's see here. Okay, so on the free... So here we do have a free tier, which is what we're going to sign up for. I <laughs> That's a lot of money per month. But let's see here, I'm allowed to have three users, one environment, so I'm imagining that's one project, one role, one locales, you can have up to 20 models, so that means you can have like dogs, cats, whatever, and 2,500 entries. That's that's a fairly reasonable free level. I, I, I'm fine, I think that makes sense. And let's see here, environments, users, roles, locales, models, version retention, that's um uh, yeah I, that's a little steep but i guess it's because you have 20 users and you're getting the second environment um locales i don't know what the locales are so i'm sure we'll figure that out in a moment models so i guess if you need it you need it the free plan is pretty nice though the free plan actually is pretty generous and i guess there's custom enterprise plans like that's this is fairly reasonable too they get more dedicated service the version retention is nice so that way you know if you need to step back you have up to 30 days to to undo any mistakes you have um, models 30 entries 5,000 like that's a pretty big jump let me just see here 20 but I guess you have to hit the 25,000 entries level so if you're getting to that point in a project probably this is justified okay and again that's $39 a month per project. Okay, so you, I guess you can have multiple projects, but you're paying per project, okay, which is, and then this is monthly. So if I turn this to annual, that gets more reasonable. So $29 a month, that's not bad. Okay, so let's go back to the free plan here. Invite your team members, no. Okay, so here we go, your quick start guide. So first we need to find our schema. Okay, so we'll do that. Create content, make your API accessible, open up your API to the public, or create secure tokens, access your API from the outside, integrate your content into your applications. So that's, okay, that part's straightforward. Invite team members. So let's create a schema. Let's see how this works. So here's schema. There's, we can create content. There are assets. And there's the API playground. Nice. Webhooks, settings, docs. Okay, so let's create a schema. <coughs> So we go to models. Models are always kind of like your different types of data. Okay, so I'm gonna hit add. And this is gonna be dog. Okay. That's all fine with me and I don't need anything else. Preview URLs. Content and live environments. That's fine. Okay, so here's my first model. Okay, and then I want to create a single line text for name. Okay, we'll just call that name. Okay, and that's that's all good. So we have a name, and we want a number. Okay, and that's going to be age. Create. You can do validations, all sorts of cool stuff in here. That's neat. Hide field, mark field required, set field is unique, limit character account, match specific. Good stuff. Okay, so that's all good. That's fine with me. So let's create some content. 
So I'm going to go to the dog and I'm going to create a new dog. So here we have Sparky, who's age 6. Okay, save. Okay. Oh, that wasn't officially published, so let's do that. Publish. So that's published. Let's create another new dog. Uh, Fido, who's age 7. Save and publish. Okay, so there we've created two dogs. Nice. So now let's work on querying the dogs. Unless it was in under assets. So I'm assuming here is where we can like upload photos, images, videos, whatnot. And let's see here. This is just basically an API playground. So if you ever never worked with GraphQL, the way this works is that you don't really send things to like you don't have a bunch of N API endpoints. You have one endpoint and you send a query to it. And generally what you do is you open up this like GraphQL playground application somewhere. So this has a built in where we can practice doing the query. So I go in here and I can see what the queries are. So I see here is a query. Okay. And so let's see here. So root types. So query, ID, stage, locales. Uh, my queries. Given its ID. Retrieves multiple assets. Where. And the way you read this is basically these are fields. So essentially, what I would do is I would be doing query. Okay, because like if I go here, these are the different queries I have. So query, which is a query. And query doesn't does it take any arguments? I don't see any arguments. So it just takes these fields. So then what we do is you would do this. And we have to name some fields. <coughs> uh, asset where asset assets. Here we go, dogs. There we go. So then I guess I would say dogs. And dogs takes in order by, I have to put in there, stage. So it should be published. So I would just where stage is published. Syntax error. Field dogs of type dog must have a selection of subfields. Did you mean dogs? Yeah, I think that's probably what I meant. Stage published. that's it this should be the fields so it should be like name and age that's the way this should work and then technically I guess we're passing in the query details here and the only thing is, see if you see an exclamation point it means you must have it so let me see what it's going I expected name found so is it supposed to be name okay I guess what well, Let's see here, before, order, stage, oh, wait, no, I'm looking, I want to look for dog, what am I looking down here, dogs, okay, dogs, stage, And I think that does it. So basically it says, get dogs with that are published. Name and let's practice that out. And that works. It's perfect. Okay, so there's my query. Okay, and that's basically what you have to do here. So again, this, I go through here to find the different things I can query. So I want to query specifically dogs. 
these are things that are arguments that you can pass into the function and then you specify which fields you want. So if I didn't need age, and that's the beauty of GraphQL, I can ask just for the information that I want, then I just do that and see only gives me back Sparky and Fido. Okay. So that's cool. So we got our query. Now we just need the API URL. So let's see your webhooks. It's probably under webhooks. You need to create one, API playground. Where can I get the endpoint? Settings, API access. Here we go. Okay, access to the URL endpoint at any at uh, of any of your stages. Let's see your public API permissions. Set API access permissions for unauthorized requests. Content that can be queried. Content from stage published. Should only be enabled if draft queries are allowed. Uh, permanent auth tokens. Application tokens are used for creating API access permissions separate from the uh, token name. Content that can be queried. Okay, so this, we'll just save this. So we're just saying that the public can query the public stuff. So let's open Postman. I've been meaning to try out Postman's GraphQL features, so let's do that. Let's create a new tab. Okay, and let's see here. The way we want to do this is control C, we copy that over. And let me see where this where did I see the GraphQL piece? Body, here we go, GraphQL. Okay, which should be a post request. Because the way GraphQL works is you're making a post request to the API and it's posting the query. So I'm gonna assume that okay I think I just have to copy the query into that other area so I go over here back to API playground I'll copy my query okay and then paste that in there and let's try to send and there we go it works okay so essentially I would just make that API request again which is just a post request this to here and then theoretically if I really wanted to let me think about how this would work the way this would work is if I wanted to do it not through GraphQL so if I just wanted to do it through raw like raw JSON let's just do that raw JSON what I would be doing is sending over an object with a property called query And then we're making a post request and the string is that. Okay. Just follow that for a second. Query. Yeah, that should do it. Okay, and then let's try that out. Uh, I mean, formatted it wrong. Let me think here. Uh, 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 uh. Yeah, it's been a while since I've done it that way. Um, but you get the idea. This uh, under the hood. That's essentially what's happening. Um, but yeah, so that's how that works, and you'd pull the data in there. So if we would use this, we use the GraphQL thing again. There we go, Sparky Fido, and uh, we get the data back. So it's like a head, and then you just create your front-end website. So Butter CMS, great way to use GraphQL without having to build out a whole entire GraphQL server. Uh, has a free plan. Um, that's pretty cool. And uh, yeah, my name is Alex Merced from alexmercedcoder.com. Have a great day and enjoy.